Did you know Texas has volcanoes? And I'm not talking about little cinder cones or small eruptions. I'm talking about huge volcanic complexes, calderas, and entire mountain ranges built by explosive volcanism. In this video, we're going to go through the geologic history of some parts of West Texas and how you can see it for yourself on an expert guided Geological Society of America field trip to the Davis Mountains this October. So let's jump into the geologic history of these mountains, specifically their ancient volcanism, and then I'll tell you a little bit about the field trip that you can go on to explore these rocks for yourself. Most people think of Texas as flat plains and oil fields, and for a, a lot of the part, you're right. <laughs> but as somebody who lived there for 27 years, I have to tell you, it's, it's bigger than you think. And there are some landscapes there that may surprise you. For example, about 35 million years ago during the Oligocene Epoch, the area that is now the Davis Mountains was alive with volcanism. The Davis Mountains are part of the Trans-Pecos Volcanic Province, which is a belt of volcanic rocks stretching across West Texas into Mexico. The Davis Mountains volcanic field specifically covers thousands of square kilometers. But why exactly? Why did volcanoes randomly start erupting in the middle of Texas 35 million years ago? Well, around 80 million years ago, the Farallon Oceanic Plate began subducting underneath the North American Continental Plate along the western margin of North America. This subduction lasted tens of millions of years and is known as the Laramide Orogeny, or mountain building event, because it led to widespread mountain building across the western part of the continent. Continent. The shallow angle of the subducting plate caused thickening of the crust, which was followed by crustal stretching and thinning as the subducted plate began breaking up and sinking within the mantle. And this crustal thinning and stretching led to the formation of what we call the Basin and Range Province, as blocks of crust dropped down between faults or breaks in the rock. And within this Basin and Range Province lies the Davis Mountains. And any time crust thins, stretches out, and faults form, this can cause volcanism by allowing magma from the mantle below to rise up through these faults. However, the Davis Mountains are quite unique, because unlike some of the more runny basaltic eruptions elsewhere in the Basin and Range province, the eruptions in the Davis Mountains were super explosive rhyolitic eruptions. So what does this mean exactly? Well, silica content of magma, so the relative abundance of SiO2 or silica within a magma, tends to control how explosive the resulting volcanic eruption will be. Rhyolite forms from silica-rich lava, which tends to erupt very explosively, whereas basalt forms from silica-poor lava, which tends to erupt less explosively, more oozy-like. So how exactly can we tell that the Davis Mountains eruptions were so explosive? Well, the rocks left behind record the silica content of the lava that they cooled from. So for example, the abundant rhyolite in the Davis Mountains suggests silica-rich explosive eruptions. Another telltale sign of explosive eruptions is tuff. Tuff is essentially welded ash, and the thick sheets of tuff present in this area suggest a vast amount of volcanic ash was released during these eruptions which is not typically characteristic of the more calmer, runny basaltic eruptions. So if we were to travel back in time to experience these eruptions, there were likely ash clouds billowing across the skies, pyroclastic flows rushing down the slopes, destroying nearly everything in their path, and entire mountains collapsing into calderas, which I'll explain in a second. One of the most spectacular sets of features here is the Paradise Mountain Pine Peak Caldera Complex. The Paradise Mountain Caldera is the result of an explosive eruption that emptied magma chambers below the surface, causing the surface to collapse in on itself. And this isn't the only caldera present in the Davis Mountains. Pine Peak and nearby features show successive eruptions, suggesting that these weren't just one-off explosions, but rather part of a volcanic system that evolved through time. So why was this volcanic system so silica-rich and explosive compared to maybe other places along the Basin Range province? Well, it has to do with the complex tectonic drivers of this specific volcanism. Turns out Basin Range extension was not the only driver, nor was it the first. 
before crustal extension began in this region, there was a switch from subduction to transform or side to side plate motion, which is thought to have led to changes in the way the plate that had subducted beneath the crust behaved. And for more on this and how it led to the explosive Davis Mountains eruptions, go to the GSA Connects 2025 field trip this October. This is a three day geologist guided trip where you'll get to see the Paradise Mountain Pine Peak Caldera Complex with stops at the McDonald's Observatory and short hikes to see the volcanic units up close. So check out the links down in the description box below for more info about this trip as well as others that GSA Connects is putting on. And maybe I'll see you there. I'm going on two different field trips so let me know in the comments which ones you're going to and you don't have to go to the conference to attend any of the field trips you can attend any of the field trips without being a conference attendee so i highly recommend for literally anybody you don't have to be an expert this is expert guided so you really get the full experience of seeing what a geologist sees in the field when we look at these rocks and it's so cool anyway i'll see you guys in the next one bye